So what we have found also is looking at the genes in these uh, brain areas is that when uh, the vocal learning birds, in this case a canary sings, and we're going to play a song here. That that singing behavior <coughs> is associated with a robust increase of particular genes in the brain uh, shown in the white label here. So what you're seeing here uh, is a brain of an animal who is just passively hopping around and, or flying a little bit but not singing, and a brain that of an animal who is singing. The red stain here is uh, what we call crescent violet. It stains all cells in the brain. The white stain here is a probe or that recognizes what we call messenger RNA. And this technique that we use is called in situ hybridization. The messenger RNA is a product of a gene uh, that is uh, synthesized in the brain. And what happened here is when the bird sings, the messenger RNA for this gene called Zank is increased in the motor pathway song nucleus HVC and increased in the song learning pathway nucleus called area X here. And what we found is that the more a bird sings, um, <clears throat> here shown on the x-axis, the more gene expression we see in the song learning nuclei here. And in this case, for every song the bird sang, there was a one-fold increase in the amount of gene expression. The slope of this line here is one. So what does that mean? That means you just heard one song about there was a one-fold increase of the gene expression. If I sing again like like I tried to do to Canary, there's, a, there's more increase. And <clears throat> it's interesting to uh, study this gene in the context of its function, but we've been using it like an imaging approach in the brain, like MRI, to actually uh, assess in the brains of vocal learners where are these structures.